At this point in the course, we've covered two major topics. The image formation process, perspective projection, lenses, JPEG compression, and everything we did at the first part of the course. And we've done some image analysis. We've done motion estimation, we've done stereo estimation, and we've done some 3D reconstruction and planar homography. And there is a lot, lot more we could have done in that image analysis part, but we need to start building up our toolkit to get to the next phase of this course, which is image understanding. And that's in some ways where I promised we would eventually be, that a big part of computer vision is understanding the world from the images we see. And the last part we did with the motion and the stereo and the 3D reconstruction is sort of there, but not quite. It's more about making measurements and then how do you use those measurements to really reason about the world? Who am I looking at? What am I looking at? How far is that person from where I'm looking at? How do I navigate to that space? And that's what the second part, or the, I guess the third part of this course is going to be about. We're going to talk about three aspects of image understanding. We're gonna be talking about supervised learning um, in terms of regression, supervised learning in terms of classification, and unsupervised learning. There's a third aspect to image understanding, which is called reinforcement learning, which we will not be covering in this uh, class. So let me just talk briefly about what these three are, because this is going to take up the rest of the semester for us. Supervised learning is learn how to predict an output for a given input. Think about learning as a function. And when we talk about supervised learning in terms of regression, the output is a real valued um, number. So for example, think I want to predict the stock market. Um, how, what fraction will it go up or down? I want to predict the temperature tomorrow. That's a regression problem. Supervised learning can also be thought of as a classification problem where now the output is a discrete class label. So think, for example, character recognition. Um, I want to scan a, a document and tell, is it an A, is it a B, is it a C, et cetera? Is it a zero, a one, or a two? That's a type of discrete class label. Think um, object recognition. Is it a person, is it a dog, is it a cat, is it a car, is it a plane, is it a building? Think face recognition. Is it me, is it you, is it somebody else? Those are classifiers because the output is a label versus a real value. And we're gonna be talking about both of these types of supervised learning. By the way, why is it called supervised? Because we're going to have training data. We're going to tell you that, for example, historically, based on these inputs, the stock market has gone up or down. And you're gonna use that to try to predict the future. Same with supervised classification. We're going to tell you, here are a bunch of pictures of people. Here are a bunch of pictures of dogs. Learn how to classify and then predict things into the future. So that supervision is we give you some training data so you can try to learn these mappings either to real valued regression or discrete valued uh, uh, classifiers. The last thing we'll talk about um, in a little bit less detail but I think is still important is so-called unsupervised learning where you are given some data, but you don't necessarily have labels on them. I, can't, I won't necessarily tell you that here are the inputs corresponding to the stock market going up or down. I'll give you some images, but I won't necessarily tell you that these are all the A's, the B's, the C's, and the D's. Um, and I wanna learn a representation that can find these patterns automatically without that type of label, labeling. And we'll talk about a number of techniques. And all three of these are used in various aspects of computer vision. But importantly, these tools are not just computer vision tools. These tools are used everywhere. And so the, for the focus for the next part of this class will absolutely be on computer vision and images and how we use these. But more importantly, will be on the underlying mathematical and computational tools for doing supervised learning regression, supervised learning classification, and unsupervised learning. And my hope is not just that you can use these tools in image processing and computer vision and robotics, but you can use these tools anywhere because they are so broad and generalizable and incredibly powerful.